of mind and let's just keep the energy going, all right? Can we do that? Just keep the energy. take all the way in. We're just going to drop our shoulders and just letting go of today and just becoming centered, becoming present, becoming aware, becoming selfish, right? Putting self first for the next few minutes, okay? So just breathing in and just relaxing, breathing out. Dropping our shoulders. And just being fully present and just being fully aware and just breathe. There we go. And whenever you're ready, just open your eyes and just return to this very present moment. How are we feeling? Feel a little bit relaxed? Yes. Yeah? Breathing all that good stuff out and breathing in better stuff, right? So let me go ahead and introduce myself. As um, Andrea had mentioned, my name is Marcia Witter, and I'm an integrative health coach and a well-being coach as well. Um, I graduated from IIN not too long ago, Institute of Integrative Nutrition. I graduated again not too long ago. I'm a mother of two amazing children, right? And a glammed mother of two beautiful grandchildren, right? 2020, I'm not a grandma, but I'm a glammed ma. So you could use it. It's okay. I'll, I'll let you use it. Hey, I wanted to do something different, right? Because I'm so happy and excited about them, right? Um, I just relocated here probably about two years ago to the state of Connecticut and I am loving it. I, I embrace changes and I'm really, really loving this, this part in my journey, really celebrating life and just celebrating being here. Now, the reason why I decided to become a, um, just to share a little bit of my background, right? The reason why I decided to become a, an integrative health coach was 
almost about 10 years ago, right, I became pregnant. Yep. Became pregnant with my little girl. And of course, as ladies, you know, we get excited and somebody back there smiling because she remember those days, right? And went to the to the OBGYN. Right when I walk in, all the beautiful ladies just sitting there, rubbing their stomach, eight months, six months, whatever months they were, right? And of course, I knew that I was pregnant and I was also excited, right? So guess what I did? Walk in with my belly. No belly, but you know, I wanted to act as though, hey, listen, I'm here too and I have me a little baby going on, right? Went in, sat down, saw magazines, begin shopping. No idea what sex of the child. That was okay with me. Begin high shopping, right? Then the nurse came and said, hey, Marcia, it's your turn. I got up, had the biggest smile, walked in. She said, ah, oh, you know, we do the routine, the vital signs, the blood pressure, and all the good stuff. And she said, okay, let's do an ultrasound. I said, sure. Did the ultrasound. And when I did the ultrasound, the, the ultrasound tech said to me, oh, you're pregnant. And I said, thanks for confirming. I knew that, but I appreciate you letting me know again, right? And after that, she said, okay, well, that's good. And she said, oh, hold on just a second. And I said, oh, okay, you know, I'm still smiling, excited, because I remember years ago, I prayed to have twins. So I'm thinking, probably this is it, right? Here goes a sidebar. My only reason for wanting to have twins was for them to be identical. Yeah, when no one could differentiate them, but just me. Then I became an adult and realized, mm, not a good idea, right? So, so I figured it was twins. When she said, hold on just a second, then she said, oh, I see something. I'm like, okay, so this must be it again. Then she said, oh, you have fibroids. And me, to be honest, at that point, I've never heard of the word. So when she said fibroids, the first, my first response to her was, well, when I had my son 16 years ago, nobody told me that I had it. So I'm thinking it's just something that pregnant women get on their second, you know, childbearing, right? So she said, go ahead and get dressed and, you know, speak with the OBGYN. When to speak with the OBGYN at this point, she said, Marcia, you do have a fibro, you have a fibro. There's three different types. The one that you do have will have to do a C-section. Now, I have nothing against C-section. If it has to be done, absolutely, right? My dream was to have natural birth. That's what I did for my son, and that was my prior for my next child, right? The minister say C-section, I was hearing what she was saying. But I wasn't listening, right? But there's a difference. It could be in a room, everyone talking, you're not fully focused on what's going on. My mind drifted like, mm -mm. and she said, by the way, and that's the only option, right? So my only option was to have C-section. And she, you know, she speak as a doctor, and of course I respected whatever she was saying, right? When I left, I gave myself one option. And the option that I gave to myself was to have a natural childbirth, natural birth. So I went on this path of just researching night and day. You name it, you call me, I'm researching and looking until I started finding information to say, oh, while you're pregnant, you can reverse the fibroids. And I'm like, oh, this is great. And I kept researching and more websites keep saying the same thing over and over again, right? I remember the, probably within a week or so, I called one of the numbers that I saw and I said, hey, listen, you're saying that I'm able to do this? And they said, absolutely. And I said, perfect. But she said, hold on. It's gonna cost you X amount of dollars, right? And of course, listen, right now I'm willing to spend. You tell me, right? And when she tell me the person said, let me think about that for just a second. That's a little bit too high. <laughs> so, so then she said, before hanging up, she said, there's one thing that you're able to do in the meanwhile, right? And this is what changed my life up until this point, right? 
She said to change the way you're eating. Right? If you change how you're eating, you'll be able to reduce the fibroids. I said, what did you just say? She said, oh yeah. If you just change what you've been eating for the last, I guess by then, probably 30 something years, you'll be able to change the fibroids will shrink. And I said, no problem. I remember hanging up, but then I was married. I called my then husband and I said, listen, all the food that we just purchased, I'm dumping it. Because I'm serious, right? How many of us have heard of cold turkey, going cold turkey? I did. I'm a living example. Right then and there, I said, I'm dumping it. He said, Marcia, do you realize we just spent X amount of dollars on that food? I said, mm-hmm. But they said, if I change the way I eat, then, you know, I could, my wishes would come through. He said, listen, just cook whatever food that we have for the next week, and then I'll go on that path with you. Right? I'll change. We could do this together. Long story short, I did it. Show back up in the OBGYN's office. I remember her picking up my chart, stepping in, and then step back out. And I'm thinking, hmm, I wonder what's that about? Then she walked in and then she said, Hey, Marcia, guess what? Your fibroids are small enough for you to give birth naturally. And that's exactly what I did. I was able to change what I eat along a few other things that I did along the way as well. And because of that, I was able to do it. While researching, do my personal research, I would tell one or two people that I would research in, right? And of course they're like, oh yeah, so why are you looking? You know, my grandma experiencing this, what do you think she should do? And I would say, well, give her this and do this and do this. The only thing I'm requesting, just give me a call back and let me know whatever whatever I said, let me know that remedy is working, right? So then I became the medicine woman. I think that's somebody's this type, but I'm, I, they gave it to me, right? So I became the medicine woman, right? But I said, mm, I wanna be the knowledge extender. There's a lot of medicine women. Give me something different, right? So I'm the knowledge extender, love to learn and just share whatever knowledge that I do have. So. That's my background, how I des why I decided to become an integrative health coach. After studying for about 10 years, I said, you know what, let me go back to school, further my education, and be able to continue on the path that I'm on, right? So tonight we're here to talk about um, eliminating sugar. I'm here to sweet talk all of us, sweet talk, all of us, how to stay away from the sweet stuff, right? But how do we do that? And I should mention, this is an interactive session, right? So uh, let, let's, we're here to learn from each other. Feedback, I, I prefer not to just stand here and speak at you. I like for us to have a beautiful conversation, right? So we'll be able to learn mm -hmm. as we go along. So we talk about eliminating sugar. And as I walk in, I saw these beautiful books, you know, you name it, it's over there. And, and I'm so excited to see that, right? Quitting sugar, or sugar impact your diet. And that is so, so absolutely true for me. Anyone can agree? Yeah. Oh, it really affects us. But what, what is it? What decision have anyone could respond, made to say, hey, I want to make a difference in my own health? I want to make a commitment to myself. Any, you know, the, for the 2020, we always have New Year's resolution or writing different things down. Anyone, any commitment mm -hmm. have you made by saying, hey, at least one commitment? This is the, please, go ahead. Um, it, it's the sugar, but I'm also gluten free, so I'm promising myself to get better at that. Good. Um, and then I, the unfortunate thing is I work for a company that I have to go to Dunkin' Donuts every Friday morning and get <laughs> donuts, bagels, muffins, um, <clears throat> etc. And up until, well, I started this on Saturday, so, <laughs> but not doing it. So all this time, Fridays, I'm like, oh, just one little donut hole and it's not going to be a big deal. And one is an addiction and it turns to five and six and mm -hmm. I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna, you know, I said it to somebody and they're like, well, they're not making you eat it just because they're making you buy it. And I was like, yeah, that's true. So. <laughs> and and you, you know what, you're absolutely right. There, there, this is not their slogan, but there is a particular food slogan that says, 
once you eat one, or you cannot just eat one. Anyone know that? Yeah, 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 yeah. You cannot just have one. Exactly. So a lot of us can relate to exactly what you're saying. But why is that though? Why is that when we show up, we cannot just purchase it and take it to whoever sent us without eating it? Anyone know? You think you're going to be okay, and then you're not. And you like the way it tastes too. So. Absolutely, you're absolutely. Part of the group. Absolutely, you're right. But here goes a bigger picture for us all to think about. The food industry have spent billions, with a capital B, to do research to say what is it that Marcia like. Right? When Marcia walk into a store and smell certain things, what is it going to trigger? It's not just triggering one sensory, right? It's triggering multi sensory scientifically. That's what they're do they have been doing. <coughs> Even the color affects us. Even just the color affects us. I remember my, my, my nephew when he was probably like three or four. He would pass by dry, when his mom would pick him up from daycare, wherever they're going. Whenever he passes by a particular store, we all could read signs, it's like this, right? With a yellow, that one, yeah, got it? Mm -hmm. yeah. He would literally have a tantrum, screaming, kicking, you name it, he would do it. Why? Because of the research, hmm, the color, hmm, 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 color receptors. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I want it and I have to have it. No, no matter what she does, she would have to literally stop, pull off the highway wherever and get it to him. Or whenever she gets it, he's the sweetest little boy in the whole world. <laughs> he's so nice and happy and excited. And that's exactly what happened to us. Just the thought of having sugar changes our mood. Think about it. Just the thought, we're feeling like, oh my God, today is such a crappy day. Whatever we may say, right? And Marcia walks in with a box of donut and say, hey, guess what? Here we go. You're like, oh my God, right? You're ready to work, what, 16, 20 hours? Because that's just the power that it has, right? Or you could just smell it like you just mentioned. You're like, I cannot wait until noon or whatever time. Or I cannot wait to run back into the kitchen or, or, or into the wherever we are, right? Our place of employment, right? But how do we eliminate it? Or before even we get to the elimination, a lot of times we focus on the bigger picture that the <coughs> sugar is in, right? <coughs> the cake, the muffin, the chips, right? And all those food. It has been proven that 74% of added sugar is what really affecting us. The one that we see, like the cake and stuff, yes. But when we really think, hmm, let me go ahead and purchase this bread. And there's a bread that's called Wonder Bread. Have we ever wonder what's really in that bread? <laughs> Just a thought. Have we ever really wonder what's really in it? Reading the label, yeah. right? added sugar right the pasta and hear me clearly not knocking anyone from whatever we're choosing to eat right but just to shed a little bit of light just turn the back of those things and just take a second to look at it the added sugar i said tell you stay away from kkk cake. Well, how many people have us said, which they do really say, stay away from bread. We're like, oh, the white flour. We focus on the white flour, which is true. We know it turns to sugar eventually, right? But what about what's written on the back of it that's telling us that the pasta that we eat, the hidden sugar, the hidden added sugar, 74%. That's what's been put into our food. But here goes a real question. What is it that myself and all of us, what is it that we're really craving? Is it really sugar that we're craving? 
And we'll answer that as we go along. It's the serotonin, it's the feel good after you eat it. Absolutely. Energy. Absolutely. But, and as you say energy, I'm glad you said that, right? So we said, oh, let me get a little bit of sugar to get some energy, right? How many of us like roller coasters? No. Oh, do. <laughs> you I do? do? Oh, yeah. oh, awesome. I celebrate with you. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> this is for me personally. I'll get excited. I'll show up. Of course, I have a little girl, so I have to get on the ride with her. But make sure that you have something in your ear, because when I get on, I am screaming <laughs> for dear life, period, right? So that's just exactly what sugar does to us, right? So we get excited, it tick brings us all the way up, right? And you're feeling good, and when you get up there, guess what, it levels out. That's what roller coaster does, right? And it levels here. Right, and you're like, oh yeah, this is feel good, and you're like, oh, we could see everyone high eating donuts and muffin and all the good stuff. And guess what happened after a few seconds? Because <laughs> we drop, right? Right, because get the law of gravity states that whatever goes up must do what? Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> so eventually, we're no other roller coaster ride. I know many people are walking to a store anywhere, and you're walking feeling good because we did our meditation and we did, you know, yoga and all the fancy stuff that we do. And you walk up to someone and they have the worst attitude. No one have ever experienced that? Okay, good. Please don't. Please do not, right? And you're like, and it could be even a family member. And you're like, oh my gosh, so what did I do to her? Why are they acting like this towards me? They're the sweetest person. Could it be that they just came off with a roller coaster sugar rush? Mm -hmm. could, could that be? Or lack of sleep. <laughs> absolutely. You, you're absolutely right. Right? And then later said, oh my gosh, I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling fatigued. I'm feeling irritated. Why? Because that's exactly what sugar does to our body, right? So let's talk about a few things so we can eliminate it, right? Or replace it. Because let's be realistic. It took us a while to get wherever we are, right? So now to eliminate, it's going to be a little bit of work. But will it worth it in the end? It absolutely will. Step by step by step gradually, right? So as we talk in the morning, right? We always talk about taking preparing our day or preparing our mornings. So for breakfast, what is it that we normally do? Have for breakfast. If because some people do not have breakfast. How many people you don't have to raise your hand? Funny people, let's think about it, don't normally have breakfast. Some people do not. There's a few heads going because we, we do not. We skip it for whatever reason, right? But for the rest of us who enjoy breakfast, what do we normally have? Anyone? Scrambled eggs. Fruits. Okay, good, good. Anyone else that have breakfast? Oatmeal. Okay. Peanut good. butter. Okay. Yogurt. Toast. Yogurt. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. So I'm loving those. So let me back up on a few things. You mentioned um, oats, right? Or oatmeal. oatmeal. Are you getting the regular? Real oatmeal. Huh? Real oatmeal. The real, I like the steel. Not steel the cut. steel cut. Steel cut. Steel cut. Correct. Yeah. Either steel cut or the, like the three minute cooking one. Okay, perfect. Okay, so for me personally, thank you, the steel cut. No one wants the steel cut anymore. It's going to take a little bit more time. But we either take the time now or the doctor said, well, this is the time I'm giving you to go, you know, exercise or figure something else. So, right? So that's awesome. And yogurt, great. But if, mm -hmm, somebody was reading my notes. <laughs> <laughs> yogurt is good. But again, what kind of yogurt? Great. Great. Perfect. Good, so you're on the right path. But guess what? A lot of these yogurts, when I walk into the store, I'm literally reading like, sugar. are you kidding me? It's filled with sugar. Even the one that may say 
explain. Um, correct. Yeah. And you look at the back of it, the added sugar, 27% of sugar, mm -hmm. 21%. Now we get into in a little bit how many sugar um, the food industry recommends for us to have right and fruit perfect natural sugar scrambled eggs perfect right so whenever we are having sugar we having it we're craving it for a particular reason right and one of the reasons is that most people have gotten away from what's called cell food anyone have heard of cell food oh perfect mm -hmm. Good, good, good. So let me explain what cell food is. And to be honest, when I started researching and changed the way I eat, I honestly thought I coined that term, cell food. But after researching someone else, I already had the idea. They did, so I give them credit. So cell food is the food that nourishes our cells, right? Think about it. The food that's nourishing our cells. So whenever our cells are nourished, guess what? We're not craving that sweet. We're not craving that sugar. So that's one. We, re we really don't. I personally, and I like to you know, refer to myself and my experiences. I would go to a particular restaurant years ago. And they had a sign. And guess what the sign says? eat all that I can eat. That's what the sign said, right? Anyone can think about a particular store that has that? Like a buffet store, mm -hmm. eat all you can eat. And I would literally go in and eat all I could eat, pay like 10, $12. And after the second plate, my friends would say, Marcia, are you ready for us to leave? No. <laughs> uh-uh. It said all you can eat. I've only eat ten dollars worth. I have two more dollars to go. And what I'm saying, I would literally eat and get stuffed. Then I would order a bed on the side, cause by the time I get done, I only want to fall asleep to be honest with you, right? But ten minutes later after driving home, I am starving. I am so hungry and I couldn't figure it out like you gotta be kidding me. I ate like four plates. Why am I still hungry? Until I went on that path of researching. My body needs food that nourishes my cells, right? And whenever my cells are nourished, then I'm not craving the sugar, right? I'm not craving all that sweet, right? So we start out by eating <coughs> food that nourishes our cells. Here goes, and starting out with food that's filled with fiber, especially first thing in the morning. Well, we talk about fiber allow us to do other things, right? Whenever fiber is in our food, it nourishes our cells. When our cells is nourished, again, we're not running back and forth for a donut or whatever it is. It keeps us full for a longer period of time, right? So how many? We just mentioned a few things that we have for breakfast and perfectly fine. Here goes a few fruit food. If you want to start eliminating sugar, it's starting in the morning, right? By having, so like avocado for breakfast. How many of us have avocado for breakfast? Super, super. With eggs. And that's fine. A fan of eggs. <laughs> I love it. I, I eat e eggs ever so often as well. Fiber. When I eliminate sugar, start with fiber to replace that, to begin nourishing your cells. Beets. So many people like beets. Perfect. Perfect. Beets fill with fiber and fill with protein. But there is a question. Would most of us like it, but how often are we eating it? Mm. Right? How about beets for breakfast? Marcia, what are you saying? Ah, I see someone like Marcia. Come on, no way. But we want to eliminate sugar. Right? Do we agree? Yes. Right? Yeah. Do we want to have optimum health 50, 60 years from now? Can anyone attest to that and agree? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? 
So in order to have the health that we're expecting to have, then we just have to change up just a little bit. Whatever I'm sharing with all of us is for a lifetime. Not something just for three months from now to have, like they would say, summer coming up, you'll have the beach swimwear figure body. Mm -mm, that's what they try to sell us. My thing is have a body for life, right? You don't have to, oh, summertime and do all that workout and that fat diet and do this and do that. Gradually, beets. Steam vegetable in the morning for breakfast. Lima beans, steamed okra. I know. So we we'll go, oh, but guess what? Those was gonna nourish our cells. And not only nourishes our cells, but guess what else? It gives us the energy. Those are food that naturally gives us energy. Right? Natural energy. Having water first thing in the morning. How many water first thing in the morning? Good. Yes. Do you put anything in or just plain water or like lemon water? Great. I, I'm so glad you asked that question. For me personally, I enjoy lemon. So squeeze a little bit of lemon or here goes a superfood for me. I love apple cider. Vinegar. Mm -hmm. Apple cider vinegar. Let me give the instruction and all to take that. And I'll tell you why I'm saying that, right? I remember years ago, I, I fell in love with apple cider vinegar. And I said to one of my co-workers, I said, listen, put a, you know, have a little bit of apple cider and it will give you energy and cleanse your system, build your immune system, especially in the winter time. Well, year round, to be honest with you, right? Give it a boost and that energy, because they're always asking, Marcia, I don't get it. You're always energized. What's your secret? What is it that you're doing, right? I think I'm doing something else, but to be honest, it just changes the way I eat, right? So here goes one of the things that I do. Now, let me tell you her story. She went, she purchased an apple cider vinegar, she went home and had some. She came back the next day and said, Marcia, we need to talk. Mm -hmm. And I got excited. Woohoo! She's gonna have good news for me. <laughs> she said, Marcia, that's the nastiest thing I've ever had in my <laughs> life. What is that? Now I can laugh about it, right? And I said, oh my gosh, I apologize. I didn't give you the instructions. She went home. She got the bottle. There you oh, see, yeah. you knew exactly what she did. Yes. How many have had apple cider vinegar before? Oh, yeah. Oh, so oh, let me yeah. really give the instruction for everyone else that won't call me and say, Marcia, what is this, right? She put it to her head and drink. <sighs> she didn't know because I didn't tell her. That's part of my fault, right? Apple cider vinegar is good for us, right? But not just doing this. So in, in a glass that you'll drink from, I would, if you have never had it before, it does have a strong taste to it, right? So I would half a teaspoon first, just half. Just right? half a teaspoon? To begin, correct. I'm up to one, because I know that the taste is very potent. So if you just start with a little bit first thing in the morning, right? It, 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 cleanses the system, gives us energy, and keep away that craving that we do have. Something simple. In eight ounces of water or four ounces of water, what are you talking about? I would say eight ounces, eight ounces. like a regular glass. Uh, and I guess to have a teaspoon. Correct, mm -hmm. half a teaspoon to start with. You may go up to later a little bit over a half as you taste it then you'll know exactly, do I need a splash more, or do I even need to put less than a half because of our taste buds. What's a good way to mask that terrible flavor? I mean, drinking Chocolate. it with water, you still have that same... Drink uh, it from a straw. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can, um, do you ever put, like, honey or cinnamon or anything like that in it? Mm. OK, 
Okay, great. Also warm, like almost like a cup of tea. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So I've had it warm before. Um, I've never had it with cinnamon because uh, maybe because I like the taste so much. But you know, you're welcome to put cinnamon. For me personally, for honey or any type of sweeteners, for me, I do not use. Why? They all break down into sugar in the end. Keep in mind that the industry will tell you sugar free from most of their foods which is true listen you're purchasing the rest of junk that's in it but the sugar they're giving it to you for free that's my joke behind that right <laughs> right like the sugar it's free have the rest of whatever i'm putting in it one two sugar I have over a hundred so over a hundred different names mm -hmm. the sugar beets the the the, the fructose you name it it's in there right the dextrose so because it has different names when they say sugar free like hmm, sugar free but there's something else that's inside of it right so just keep that in mind when you say sugar free and all that good stuff it, it's of other things so for me personally I, I i do not and maybe because i've retrained my taste bud that's why I do not use any type of sweet. No, again, that's what I've been doing and that's working for me. So then we all have to find a path. If we want to put just a little bit for taste, then that's okay, right? That's, that's completely fine with me. Um, quinoa. I like quinoa. Yes, filled with fiber, filled with protein. Filled with nutrients that nourishes our cells. It could have with, and there are so many different menus with quinoa, right? You can have it for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And then for breakfast, I just had some milk in it. And for, again, I thought someone was saying something. Um, I just put milk in it. But I'm using almond milk. I do not do cow's milk for the last 10 years. So I'm using almond milk and for flavoring then I'll get the vanilla or the original almond milk and there's egg milk or rice milk there are different types right because there's so many research and studies that have shown that first it has so much sugar in it right milk cow's milk anyone have seen those researches scientific a lot of sugar not only that all the pesticides that's inside of those that that's inside of the milk that they're feeding to us and put it at the top of the pyramid. Yes. What is quinoa? Great. So quinoa is an an Okay. So quinoa is an ancient grain that has been around for thousands of years. Grain. Yes, it's a small grain that's again filled with so much fiber. That's what I've used to replace rice. So you could use it like a rice, you could put it in your salad, um, in your soup, whatever is it that you're making. And it's so filling and so satisfying. And where would you buy that? Okay, it's, it's now in, I've seen it in a lot of stores. I really appreciate your asking. Costco has it. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it in, right, practically any store. The health food store, I've seen it in Big Lots. I've seen it in Walmart. A lot of different stores. There are two different colors that I've seen thus far. The kind of ivory color <coughs> and then like purplish black or the kind of mix it together. Phenomenal taste and feel with it's a rice. rice aisle. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And you cook it similar to rice? Similar. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. It does mm -hmm. take longer. Yeah, it tastes Absolutely. a little bit longer. Yes. You're yeah, right. Can you use faro also? Is that similar to quinoa? Yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. I've done some research on that. Yes. Here goes the next one that's filled with um, to eliminate your sugar food that filled with um, cell foods. Teff. Teff or tiff? T E F F. <clears throat> Again, it's a grain loaded with fiber. Loaded with fiber. 
my nine-year-old daughter will literally cry if I do not have it for breakfast. Hmm. If I'm not able to prepare it because she had been eating it since she was a baby. So she's so used to it now. <clears throat> so is and that in the rice aisle also? That particular one I'm only seeing now in health food stores. Oh. It may be in different stores, probably I just haven't seen it as yet, or <coughs> possibly there. Again, nourishes your cells, eliminates sugar. Is it similar to grits or anything like that? Or? Um, kind of, sort of, the grains are kind of like that, right? Because it's very, very small. Next time I may have to bring a package here. Yeah, but the grains are very small and it's brown. It's a staple dish, Ethiopian staple dish that they've been eating for years. And there's so many research on it that's telling you the nutritional value behind it. So yes. what does it taste like, similar to what? Good. So it has like a little, for me, a little nutty taste. A nutty? Rustic okay. nut taste to it. And you could put all your, you know, your different spices inside of it. I normally do it for breakfast because my daughter loves it for breakfast. Or you could have it for your dinner. Either way, either with your, your fish that you may eat or with your salad, anything along those lines. Um, we may say, oh, well, Marcia likes sweet. What do you suggest? And there are so many now natural sweet things that's on the market that should be natural and healthy right but well, here goes one of my favorite whatever i'm saying this is again my favorites that i'm sharing plantains have we heard of plantains mm -hmm, mm -hmm. fried plantains oh, they're like a big of bananas yeah. right different texture correct you're absolutely right and they are naturally naturally sweet so if you say oh, i want something sweet for dinner to go with it then let's try something a little bit more natural just you know fry let it um, in some olive oil or anything, you, 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 all that you do like, golden brown, and just enjoy. Sometimes I have that if I feel like something for, like that for breakfast, or when I come home, whatever I'm preparing, and that's what I'm putting on the side. So guess what? I'm not saying, oh, I cannot wait to have that big slice of cake. Even though now they're putting different nutritional value in some of those um, foods that they do have, right? Um, potato salad. Using purple skin potato. Not the brown skin. That's what I'm not saying. If that's your choice, then it's okay. Right? Eliminating sugar, nourishing our cells. But the one with the purple skin, filled with nutrients. You may spend a little, probably an extra 20, 30 cents. But this is what I normally say. You either spend that extra $10 now or whatever it may be, because it's gonna cost us a little bit more, right? Let's be realistic. Or we spend 50 later when the doctor say you need 50 pills. No, each of us have to decide. I either spend it now or spend more later, right? So just begin tweaking those things just a little bit as we go along. But mayo, does that have a lot of sugar? Mayonnaise? mayonnaise? Some mayonnaise does, mm -hmm. right? And the type of oil that they put into the mayonnaise. What I'm doing is like the Greek yogurt, mm -hmm. the natural Greek yogurt, if I have to put mayo on anything, which is, to be honest, rare because I don't eat bread. Or anyone who eats bread, I suggest sprouted bread, sprouted grains, right? more nutritional value for those of us who enjoy bread, right? So sprouted bread is, um, or they call it, or there's things they have also, the Ezekiel bread, they say that's very, um, very, very good for us to eat. And I've already mentioned <coughs> the almond milk, um, bitter lemon, bitter lemon, melon, let me back that up, bitter melon. Bitter. Hmm. Curbs sugar cravings. That's what the, the item itself is called, bitter melon? Mm -hmm. And where would you get that? In a regular food? grocery store, sometimes in the Asian stores. Really? Mm -hmm. It's just some of these things that, you know, we see they look a little bit different. We're like, oh, let me stick to the norm, <coughs> right? Curb your sugar cravings. Celery. 
Mm -hmm. Cilantro. Cook with some cilantro in your meat, like in your quinoa, whoever like quinoa. These are food that's gonna again nourishes the cell, remove all the metal from our system, the, the celery does. It celery have a, probably over 110 different um, benefits for those little small leaves that we see, so filled with so many different nutritional value. Ginger tea, eliminating sugar. Just wake up in the morning or at night before we go to bed. Have a cup of ginger tea. But do the ginger root. We have all seen the ginger root. I will cook with the ginger root. I know we just pass the ginger root. What are we doing with the ginger? Cooking with it, but not frequently. Ah, yeah. Just get the ginger root and just um, smash it just a little bit, right? Or you could grate. A lot of people grate it in their water. And just boil it probably like 10 minutes. It soothes your system, eliminates you from having that sugar craving. It's good for seasick. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Just put a little piece if you can stand the taste underneath your tongue. That's what my grandmother thought us growing up. Right? Very good for that. Right? Um, releases stress. How many of us get stressed? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just wake up five, ten minutes before. And while we're bladed, while we're putting on our makeup, men, while we're shaving and all, you know, just have you put you on a little cup of ginger tea. So instead of running out 20 minutes early and going to a particular place to stand in line for 20 minutes, and we know the line is wrapped from here, and you come back around here four times. But we get there and we wait so diligently. Yes, because I have to get this. That place that you mentioned before? <laughs> yeah, that one, right? But what if, what if we decide just once a week to begin to tweak what it, tweak our health, the eating habits, once per week? So you know what, I'm not gonna get in that line away for 20 minutes. What if I have a cup of ginger tea in the morning? What if I have a glass of apple cider vinegar? <coughs> what if I take the time and just steam some okra, or some lima beans, or some tail? Just what if? How would I feel for that day? What will I look like years from now? Right? Just eliminating your sugar. A, a, a client of mine just reported um, probably about two weeks ago when we had our session. <coughs> I am so energized. I am so organized. She said, no, my life is getting to be so much better. We're just organizing things. Then she went on to say that I am even glowing, right? Because she said, no, our mind is so clear. She said, I didn't know just eliminating sugar would have caused all these results. Where she's working, she'll go in and her, her manager will walk up and say, hey, um, here goes four items I'd like for you to do. And she'll look at it and she'll say, mm, done. I've already done that. Oh, yeah, that I'm done. This one, oh, I just sent that email. Why? Sugar allows our minds to be foggy. We cannot, we used to be like, oh, man, I can't even think straight right now. Why? right because it's so clouded but backing off step by step our mind become clear our energy is skyrocketed and like she said we'll all begin to glow right and of course that was her expression of the way that she was feeling in just a short period of time that's the result that she's already um getting just from doing that Eating fish that's filled with omega-3, mackerel, right? Sardines, omega-3 filled with so much, I mean fish, filled with so many um, 
minerals in them. You know, like I said, omega-3. Those are cell foods. Here goes one more of my superfood. Sea moss. Sea moss? Sea moss. Sea moss. Sea moss has um, 92 of the minerals that our body needs. And where do you find that? The health food store, or you could order it online, right? Is it like seaweed? Well, or is it's it the different? Right. Well, it's different actually. I love seaweed. Yeah, but is it's it different. Dry? Yeah, it's it's a plant that they turn into powder. Hmm. Or if you could get the the, the plant itself the, from the from the ocean, because some people sell it. Some stores will sell it, and you just boil it and put it in your green drink whenever we're doing it. Filled with so much nutrients. Again, cell food. <coughs> One hundred and ninety. Excuse me, ninety-two of the minerals that our body has. That's what sea moss um, has in it. I had a friend. Her name um, Amanda. I met Amanda about six years ago. Back then, I didn't know as much as I know now. Right. And Amanda, different type of health issues. Because as a co-worker, you get to know people, right? But we knew Amanda by then. She was a diabetic, and she also was an insulin. And I remember we would go in Amanda's office. And when you open her drawer, whenever you're ready for a snack or lunch, you don't have to bring it to work. Just walk in and say, oh, Amanda. And guess what? She said, oh, you know, take whatever. And then we would all oh, like, I thought diabetics not supposed to eat all this good stuff, the Twinkie bars and all that good mm -hmm. stuff in the drawer. And she said, oh, Marcia, you know, I'm going to eat it, right? But some days, the ladies would come in the office and say, hey, Marcia, go speak to Amanda. She's crying. They were like, what do you mean? What's going on? Our emotions from having all that sugar because sugar changes our mood. I mean, we mentioned that earlier, right? Mm -hmm. Literally, would change your mood. And you would say the simplest thing to Amanda, and she would break down just crying. And we're like, What's going on? Then she would get her snack, eat it, and then take her insulin. But about I think five, six years ago, I remember going to work. And I'd taken off a day or two before Christmas. And she was always the first one at work because she was also on oxygen. So it took her, took her a while to walk upstairs to get to the elevator. And I said, hey, where's Amanda? And I said, Marcia, we didn't tell you. Like, what do you mean? She said she got sick. And she had also rushed to the emergency room. I said, okay. She said, no, Marcia, you don't understand. Amanda is in a coma, right? Because of all what she has been eating, plus I'm sure other challenges, right? And then because in the office we were like family, we'll take turn, go look for Amanda. And I remember seeing Amanda just laying there. We would just brush her hair, touch her, and you know, Amanda, we need you, we love you. You gotta come back to us. And I remember the family member would call and say, yeah, you guys could visit, you know, she's still in a coma, just visit and talk to her, we would. And then within a week, we got a call. Keep in mind, Amanda was only 35, 35. And we got the call and said, Amanda is no longer with us. Amanda has transitioned. So what am I saying? One item at a time. One food that will nourishes our body at a time. One food to eliminate, right? The industry is set up just to pour it on us. 
just to pour it on or hidden like what we just talked about, right? Now if we just eliminate it step by step, where would, would Amanda be here now possibly? But this is a question. How many people know the amount of sugar that we eat, that we have added sugar that we're getting in our food on an everyday basis? How many? Anyone? How much are we supposed to have or how much we are eating? How much we're eating? How much is already in the food that we're purchasing? About 70 grams extra or something? No, way there? more way more than that. Oh, way more than that. I'm glad you said that. 200 so, grams. Here goes my question. What does 70 gram look like? To anyone? So here we go. The food industry put grams. Oh. When you walk into a store, you see grams. How many people know what that represents realistically? Right? And I'm going to get to that for just a second, right? So here we go. Per week. This is how much sugar we're having per week. This represents 39 spoon, excuse me, let me back up, per day, 39. Additional sugars, you're saying? Yes. Okay. All that, oh, this is not sweet enough, let me add it, or like the yogurt, 21% mm -hmm. I've added, and it will tell you added sugar, mm -hmm. 39 spoons. And that is per day. Tablespoon? Teaspoon. Teaspoon. Right. That they're putting in our food. This is what um, research has shown, the food industry website that I got that from. Now, if we're having 39, how much do you think we have a day? How much are we having a week? Mm -hmm. 300. It possibly 300 grams. But it says three pounds. Wow. That's what I said too. Of sugar. Right? And that's per week. I wonder how much we're having a month. A month. This is all those sugar that we can literally know, oh, we know that type of cake gonna have X amount of sugar. But what about the hidden sugar that we spoke about? Right? 13 pounds a month. Again, it's on their website, right? And if that's a month, how many we have in per year? I need help. <laughs> Oh, let me let me clarify. Uh, who said that? Who read my notes? <laughs> you're you're correct. It's more than this. I couldn't bring in 150 pounds of sugar that we're having per year. Per person. Per person. The average person, not everyone. A hundred and fifty pounds. Now, the food industry says that we should have the recommend twenty pounds per year. Wow. And everyone gasped. But let's think. Say so this represents twenty, right? Versus a hundred and fifty. I'm going to let everyone make their decision. It's either 20 pounds or the 150. Something to think about, right? They also mentioned that ladies recommended to have six teaspoons per day. Six, right? Teaspoons per day, men. You get a little bit more than we do. So they said nine. Nine teaspoons per day. That's what the food industry is recommending. Correct. Mm -hmm. But listen to this part. We have just brought something up, right? 
you said it was, I don't know, say 77 grams. But what does that represent? Which food, which um, item have you purchased and it tells you how many teaspoons does it have in it? Which no. package? I'm waiting to purchase a package like that. No, no, no. Uh -huh. I don't want to confuse you. Have you wondered why? They don't want you to know. Have you wondered why there's so many chronic illnesses? Have you wondered why there is so many childhood obesity? And I moved it from there last week. I did a talk and someone shared that they went into the doctor with their two-year-old child and said, Doc, I'm not sure she's really not eating. No, she's eating, but the doctor says she needs to gain some more weight. And he was such an awesome doctor, because I'm speaking good of him or her. He recommended to get the child hot dogs and burgers oh, and yes. all the junk food, you name it. That was a doctor's recommendation to a young mom who left weeping and crying. Now, how can you tell me to feed my child this? So for me, I said to her then and there, I said, it's not childhood obesity anymore. It's baby obesity. If you're telling a, a, a mom to, to feed that food to your child, and I'm sure we have heard or seen the research and those type of food, what it's doing to us. Imagine a child mm -hmm. from two up until 22 or beyond. What's going to happen, <laughs> right? So when we see grams, we like, so what does that represent? Four grams of sugar represents a teaspoon. They're not going to tell you, because if you think, when you see 20 spoons, you'll double think, right? You're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. We can't visualize a spoon, <coughs> right? So when I said, tell me what a gram look like, I was being facetious by saying, who knows that when you walk in a store? But we know what a teaspoon looks like, right? Mm -hmm. So leaving here today, we're like, hmm, if that have 21, and they represent, and they say we should have six for the day. No, that's a choice we all have to make then and there. Do I want to purchase that or look for something different, right? Do I really want to eat that? Do I really want that in my system? Two more things, and then I wrap it up. I mentioned not only am I a, a integrative health coach, but also wellness or well-being. Talk about our well-being. What are we doing for stress? What does a lot of people do? <laughs> Whenever we get stressed, what's the first thing we do? Sugar. Absolutely. <coughs> right? Or for those who smoke, it's a smoke break. Right? What about a sun break? S-U-N. When everyone on my job would go for a smoke break and it was the biggest joke. They said, oh, Marcia taking a sun bath. And they would laugh at me, right? But I knew what I was doing, right? <coughs> Just walk outside, change the atmosphere, sit in that sun for five to 10 minutes. You're like, Marcia, well, it's winter. What do I do, right? Like I just started out. Five minutes of meditation to begin. And then you say, well, Marcia, when I meditate, my mind is going, going 20 miles per minute. Again, start with five. And just sit there and just breathe to release the stress. And what do I do when my mind is running? Use our creative mind and picture like a candle flickering and just count the flicker. That will keep our mind to become centered. Or come from a hundred to, to one. 199, 98. See, our mind becomes more centered and more relaxed versus one, two, three, four, five, six. It's still running. And what's for dinner? How many donuts? Should I get bagel? Should I get the sprinkle or the chocolate? Whatever is it that they sell, right? Then our mind goes there. <clears throat> Taking nature walk, writing. Like I mentioned earlier, yoga, five minutes worth of stress, five minutes of deciding 
what, how do I want my day to go today? What should I do? Right? How can I apply some of these? Someone who read my notes <coughs> earlier, but this side mentioned sleep. Are we ready to have an optimum health and eliminate sugar? How many people are getting five hours worth of sleep at night? Wow, five. You mean five or more? Or no, 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 five. five. Oh, just okay. five? Just no. five. No, no. no. Just I'm five. Just too little. Seven. <coughs> okay. Okay. Eight. Sometimes. Sometimes. Nine. Good. We have a superstar in the house today. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Ten. Okay. So I'm just a little bit overzealous. What can I tell you? Right? <laughs> it has been proven. When we do get our sleep, and based on your, I don't want to say age, because for me, I'm forever young. There's no number. Okay, so we're getting older here, right? Yeah. Right, so if we get enough sleep, and some sometimes, based on your age, like the would say, then you need different amount of sleep. And whenever your body is trained for X amount, then you don't need really need a 10 or really need a 9. But if we could get 7.5 to 8 hours worth of sleep, it will do wonders. Eliminate stress, eliminate food craving, re-energize your body and give you the energy boost that we're looking for just from getting enough sleep just from getting enough rest those are the things um if we begin to take charge of our health right taking it from somebody else's hand and putting it into ours taking control of it right what i do have here is a as i'm wrapping up right I put together a juice. I enjoy juicing, right? Whether it's green or putting a little bit of chia seed in it. I didn't get to mention the chia mm -hmm. seed. That's filled with so. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Pass me to the back, oh, sure. That's filled with so much vitamin and nutrition. Mm -hmm. That's the chia seed. Anyone tried it? Use it before? Mm -hmm. it's I didn't awesome. like. I didn't like them. No, and some people don't. Yeah. I put it in my yogurt. There was, yeah, I put it yeah. in the yogurt with them. Or when you Ooh. drink. Yeah, uh -huh. no. <laughs> right. I'm passing out one more set of sheets. And again, as a wrap up, just to say thanks to everyone for being here. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak to you. Hopefully I was able to talk, sweet talk you out of, out of sugar, right?